Thank you, thank you, thank you. Want some treats? Okay guys, so I just harvested my pears because it's that time of year. And you know how I was talking to you about blight hitting my garden? Well, I went inside and I studied it for a day. And the thing is, is once your plants get blight, they can stop ripening the fruit. And pretty much there's really no recovery. You can like prevent spreading blight, but you can't really protect the plant from ultimately succumbing. So I'm gonna get in here and harvest all the tomatoes, green or whatnot, give them a good wash down, and we're just gonna take them in the house and let them ripen that way. So, and hey, bonus, I have all the cilantro that I got from the farmer's market. So we'll be ready to restock the pantry with salsa verde. So I think it's looking even worse than when I last showed you. Um, so that's kind of sad. But hey, I have like, oh my gosh, I would say close to 120 pounds of tomatoes in the freezer. So I really have what I need. I don't have to have to have these. Um, it would be nice because I do love giving them away. Like I love at the end of the season when I've got all I need, I just start opening the doors and setting out baskets of tomatoes on the porch for anyone to come and get. But man, I sure did grow some beautiful tomatoes this year. It was a good season. It's just ending a little earlier than planned. So I'm gonna tell you something. Um, I have quite a few videos on ways to preserve green tomatoes. Um, and one of the funnest facts I think is that if you didn't have a good zucchini year, you can use your green tomatoes, firm, firmer green tomatoes, very similar to how you would use zucchini. So I've made like green tomato chocolate chip muffins, green tomato um, spice breads, things like that. Um, you can use green tomatoes to make like mock strawberry jam. I have a video on that. I pickled green tomatoes. I instead of tomatillos, these nice firm green tomatoes, you can roast them and make your salsa verde. Um, I have a video on that. Um, and then my favorite one that I did for the first time last year was I made a dal, an Indian um, curry. Uh, dish that um, gets canned and then you can add shrimp, chicken, whatever choices of food or, or just keep it vegetarian, serve it over rice in the winter. We love that. So lots and lots of things that I could do right now with my green tomato harvest or you can just bring them in the house and let them wrap, um, ripen and continue to add to your um, stores for using fresh tomatoes. Oh, oh man. Okay, what is, what are you trying to be? <laughs> Holy cow. It's half a face. He's smiling his way out for the season. That's a good feeling. So I did want to say one other thing about, like some things that I learned about blight. Um, so yes, blight lives, remember how I was mentioning the other day, like that's kind of one of the reasons that you don't want to grow um, tomatoes with potatoes or to tomatoes um, directly following potatoes in a crop rotation because they're both blight susceptible. So blight can th only thrives on living plant material. Um, and when living plant material is often found in the soil, that's kind of where it can harbor. Um, so in our winters, blight would die off. Where it doesn't die off are things like those volunteer potatoes that are still living in the soil and come back. And you know what? In this bed, I didn't follow my own, you know, the own, my own rules because I've never struggled with it. I had potatoes growing in this bed last year and I have some volunteer potatoes in the back. Another tip is 
Um, I did not use a good ground cover on my, this bed this year. Because I did such high intensity planting, I thought I was do, getting away with it, I guess. And had I had good mulch on this bed, it would have kept some of that contaminated soil from splashing up and eventually spreading. So I see a rotten potato up here, or tomato. I'll show you what happens and why I'm picking the fruit now, even though it looks great, as blight will eventually ruin your fruit crop. Look at that. Disgusting. Hey, I was about to pick that. Sorry. Matches your shirt. It, I mean, we harvested pretty much everything other than the cherry tomatoes. So let's take a look at what we got. So basically, four half bushel baskets of various tomatoes, lots of nice ripe ones. Now I'm going to pull these up to the house, <coughs> spray them down with the water hose, give them a good wash, and then um, I'll bring you guys some canning videos here in the future because I do plan on making more salsa verde this year and see what else we come up with. But it was a great tomato season, hands down, considering how little I did. I'm fortunate that I made it this far in my garden season without um, dealing with more pressure from infestation of whether it's um, funguses or pest. Um, so just wanted to share with you what I'm, what I'm doing and what I learned. So thanks guys for coming with me out in the garden and happy growing and gardening where you are.